Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and to a brand new video on cloud services contracts and their potential uh, collision due to the legal and accounting dimensions. As you can see, uh, as the topic of the video is ASC 606 and cloud services contract. So, first of all, before getting into the nitty gritties of ASC 606 and accounting standard, uh, the cloud cloud services. What is cloud? Cloud is nothing but Uber of the software world. Now I take Uber every day uh, to go to my office or go anywhere and do the normal commute. There isn't any com there isn't any uh, commitment base to that. I can go maybe 10 days in a month. May I can go for 20 days or I cannot. I choose not to go at all. Something similar resulted in the evolution or, or the birth of SaaS industry, where the distributed asset services model came into picture, as opposed to the the the, the large infrastructure built uh, kind of mechanisms, where millions of dollars and uh, were used to pump for creating IT infrastructure and then. Uh, and expensive maintenance and legacy systems and things like that so that is that is SaaS where there is no commitment the volumes can go up and down and and it's based on the usage the the invoicing is based on usage uh, based just like as I said uber or your home television which brings different kind of uh, bills every month different amount so that is what differentiated uh, uh, SaaS and a normal on-prem contract. Now came FASB's ASC 606, Accounting Standard 606. Earlier, earlier under the GAAP regime, General uh, Accepted Accounting Principles regime, the revenue recognition was based on four uh, predominant criteria. It was collectability, deliverability, uh, evidence of an arrangement and fixed and determinable price. In the new uh, uh, setup, FASB under 606 said the four or five things predominantly. One is identify the contract, identify the performance obligations, determine the transaction price, allocate the transaction price, recognize revenue when or as the entity satisfies a performance obligation. FASB did it with a good intention as to segregate different uh, deliverables. But there's one small thing which came in AC 606 with predominantly nullified, uh, or pretty much nullified the whole intent of having a, a, a zero commitment kind of a SaaS uh, uh, delivery model and that is ASC 606 says in case in case there is a termination for convenience in case there is a termination for convenience in a SAS contract the contract which is a legally binding document for the tenure of 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 the uh, of the contract so imagine it's a five-year uh, long contract or three or whatever so in case of termination for convenience present in the contract a legally signed document for five years or three years would not be considered as a contract of five years or three years or whatever it will be considered as a monthly contract so the duration would be just one month at any given point of time that that eventually created a kind of a, a haywire situation. The the cloud services provider said, "Okay, in this particular situation, I will I have no other option except to." And to a certain degree, they were happy as well. Now, I'll go ahead and charge all the money to the to the to the uh, client uh, upfront. Well. That's another topic of discussion that 
Re revenue recognition is nothing to do with the cash uh, uh, principle of the PNL. So, uh, like cash basis, there is nothing to do with revenue recognition. But uh, the cloud services providers picked up the latter and to their benefit. So this created a kind of a conflicting situation that even though a legally uh, valid contract became just a one month contract, in some way or the other, it is in short term, it is benefiting the, uh, the cloud services providers due to the stability of the revenue. There is no fear of uh, any uh, termination. And in the long run, don't know. Long run, maybe <laughs> if the pricing becomes as normal as a infrastructure kind of a deal, then the very m the reason cloud services took birth may it might be a thing of uh, undoing themselves. One more important thing uh, which I forgot to mention is. The concept of substantive penalty. Now, substantive penalty, FASB said that any any contract you can go ahead and recognize the whole revenue if there is a clause, if there is a substantive penalty built in the contract, uh, which will prevent the client in terminating the contract for convenience. Very nice. Again, in some way or the other, it went inverse to the spirit of cloud services delivery model. And second, FASB did not quantify or did not even say in some way or the other what percentage would be the substantive penalty. 10%, 15%, 30%, 50%, nothing. So, I this video is more to kind of a trigger uh, a discussion between my uh, between my friends from both sides of accounting and law uh, domain as to which supersedes which one uh, accounting policy uh, tension is gonna overrule a legally binding contract between two parties or the other way around uh, I would love to have your views on this this is a uh, an exciting uh, uh, phenomena as we are living in a cloud services based world uh, be it be reading your favorite newspaper app or at or having your in uh, enterprise arrangement uh, whatever like small deals on market research or or small licenses on on various kind of things so I'll wait for your, I'll, I welcome your comments and, and your analysis on, on this amazing topic and how FASB has uh, done, uh, like what direction FASB intends to go with these kind of uh, uh, changes in the revenue recognition format and, uh, and the treatment of cloud uh, SaaS contracts. I look forward to your comments. Thank you.